The infamous Devil Trigger, an ability acquired by the half-human descendants of Sparta. Through a ton of chest stabbings, or by fixing one's own dysfunctional family, this ability has been used time and time again, unlocking their full demonic potential, giving way for other action games to use rage modes later down the line. Hello, it's the Devil Joe, back again with a brand new video, and today I'm gonna find out which Devil May Cry game has the best Devil Trigger. And I'll be going over all of them, the DT from DMC1, Devil May Cry 2, Dante and Lucia Devil Trigger, Dante and Virgil's DT and Devil May Cry 3, the Devil Triggers of Nero, Dante, Virgil and Trish in Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, Dante, Nero, Virgil and V's Devil Triggers in Devil May Cry 5. So here's how them rankings are gonna go, I'll be rating the following demon forms based off of the following categories. Design, which game had the raddest looking demon form? Health regeneration, which DT healed you the best? Hyper armor, which DT negated the damage taken? Damage, which devil trigger made you dish out the most punishment? Moves, which demonic steroid form had the best extended moveset? I'll be throwing a top 5 at the end of each category, rounding up each Devil Trigger from their respective games, with a top 13 at the end of this video followed up by the reveal of the World Devil Trigger Championship title to the winning game! Without any further ado, let's jump into this crazy ranking! First category's design, starting off with the first Devil May Cry. The DT design here takes the whole half-human, half-demon motif quite literally. Once that DT's pop, there's gonna be a blue aura around Dante. It turns red once you bust out Ifrit. The devil form appears once you start hitting stuff, or getting into an air raid. For the DT itself, I think it looks a bit too much like a metallic suit of armor. Rather than the form of a flesh and blood demon, the bat wings look pretty cool, but compared to what we got later on, it looks off. Or maybe it's the very early PS2 graphics unintentionally giving off that metallic look. In short, it looks cool, but we got better designs later on. Next up is the infamous Devil May Cry 2, coming in with three Devil Trigger designs. With Dante get this kick-ass winged Virgil haired demon looking like something that's pulled straight from Tekken, giving Jin and Kazuya a run for their money. The only awkward part of the design are those machine gun hands. I mean, first off, what the hell is this? I'm sorry, but the machine gun paws look out of place on a demon's anatomy in the DMC verse. The Gun Devil from Chainsaw Man is completely different. I'd have an easier time buying the demon forms in DMC if swords were attached to the limbs of the devil form. But Dante has a second DT form. Yeah, this game did the overpowered second transformation before DMC 5 did. It's called the Majin Devil Trigger. This thing looks pretty damn metal. First off, it's huge. It stands toe to toe with some bosses in the game. The swords coming out of the elbows, the Lord's Frame. Oh, and. <laughs> Check it out. It's got wings. I'm a fan of these huge wings that have been reused in DMC5 for good reason. These wings aren't just the run of the mill bat wings, they look more like dragon wings spread out like a wasp's wings, adding way more size to the already huge frame. The only problem I have with it is the color scheme. It's too gray, lacking some much needed personality. They should have put in some red to make the thing stand out a bit more. The third DT we have is Lucia, a more angelic bird-like looking DT to differentiate her from Dante. With them white feathers all around plus the chicken feet, she too has pretty looking angel wings. For what's considered to be the worst game in this series, it has surpassed the first game's DT designs by putting in some kick-ass demon forms. While one of them was scrapped, there's one that has a few elements taken for later entries, and the other one was revitalized later on in the series. Next up is the franchise savior, Devil May Cry 3. I'm gonna be straight up with everyone here. In my opinion, DMC3 has by far the most creative DT designs the series has ever seen. I truly dig a lot of the hyper anime Shin Megami Tensei aesthetics on display. First off, the devil triggers for Dante and Virgil do bring light to their personalities, while looking like flesh-blooded demons. Not a suit of armor, using their respective character traits as a part of the DT. They even made Dante in DT form look like the wild card, while Virgil looks like a demonic samurai in his transformation. One thing I like about DT in DMC3 is every devil arm carries a new design for Dante. You have Rebellion DT, turning the coat into wings. Using the main black red anime protect color scheme Dante always rocks. Switch to Cerberus, the aura changes to an ice blue color. The inner lines have that same icy blue color too. The white piece on his head changes shape into this pentagram looking thing that looks pretty cool. Switch over to Agni and Rudra, the coated wings disappear, spikes appear on the legs and back. 
Duality shows in the electrical aura, plus the blue and red lines representing fire and wind. The helmet piece turns into this crown piece that looks pretty dope. Swap over to Nevin, the rockstar demon is here. Purple aura and line patterns are here, the wings are back, wrapping around him like a coat. That looks more rock and roll than Rebellion's wings. The headpiece kicks ass, it reminds me of Devilman and Jetta from Darkstalkers. Switch over to the Beowulf, the headpiece is a full-on helmet, the lines become light projections representing Beowulf's light powers. Same goes for Virgil, Yamato and Force Edge have the same samurai look to them. Switching over to Beowulf, the light is shown everywhere, the wings are tucked in from the back, but the headpiece is the same as Dante's in Beowulf form. Overall, I think that Itsuno had the right idea to get Kazuma Kaneko from Shin Megami Tensei to design these rad looking devil forms. Cause they look fucking cool! And makes you appreciate Dante's guest appearance in Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. Next on the block is Devil May Cry 4, the game that actually gave you a stand for DT. That came about from Deadweight fixing the Yamato by the power of simping. That got him some motivation fuel from his quote unquote loving tax evading father. Giving him the gift of the stand, foreshadowing the devil form he'll eventually receive later on. Not Nilo Angelo, when Nero ain't hitting stuff there's a blue aura around him, a reference to the world's greatest dad, in quotations. But when he starts hitting stuff, the stand shows itself, a callback to DMC1's DT. The stand itself shows two devil bringers, one having a Yamato sheath like the one Virgil had in 3. The body itself looks pretty scaly, like how a DT should look. The horns on the head are curling up like a halo, so in my opinion this stand looks solid. But it would have been nice to have an actual devil trigger form, at least we got that in the next game. Moving on to the wacky woohoo pizza man! Dante's DT has wings that fall on him like a coat. And a spiky chin that goes on the beard. Spiky hair like DMC2, he even has a red headpiece. Hell, on the torso there's a blatant reference to Resident Evil 4! A lot of the lines look a lot like the Los Illuminados emblem from RE4, cause Capcom loves cross-referencing a lot of their games in all their titles. On the ankles there's some red to fill in the chaps on his human form. I actually like this one, the devil form looks a bit intimidating in its own right. Even though DMC4 is a very vibrant game, the DT itself looks like something that you don't want to find yourself alone with at a dark alley. Like how a demon form should look! Let's move on to the world's best dad again, in quotations Virgil! At first glance it looks a lot like his DMC3 DT, but it's very different, first off the headpiece has changed slightly. There are patterns on the wings like his actual jacket, the sheath on the arm is still there, the DMC3 Beowulf change is still intact. Tucking the wings at the back, so yeah, I'm happy that the Shin Megami Tensei design made its way back into DMC4. Let's take a moment to talk about Trish, the laziest DT design, I mean come on, she's not even half demon. She's a full blooded demon, I mean, I'd expect Trish to have a she devil form. But nope, it's just a yellow aura of electricity and her shades being pulled down, I mean come on! A true form would've been nice, instead of this lazy ass attempt. Next up is the mythical Devil May Cry 5 coming in with some banging demon forms. Starting with Virgil's scrawny Adam Driver looking alter ego V. His DT boils down to summoning the Nightmare Blob from DMC1. But instead of its demonic tank form from the OG Devil May Cry, it's a giant hulking blob monster. With a couple of references to the tank monster in DMC1. Mainly looking at the orb that's supposed to be the head. Looks the same as the orb used for the weak spot in DMC1. The rest of the body is the blob he used to get you to fight the same bosses for a fourth time. To tell you the truth, I'm happy that a playable callback to DMC1 but repurposed for a super summon exists. As for the looks department, it kinda well... It looks like a mix between the Venom symbiote and Cannon Bolt. With the huge frame, it looks more alien than demon. And holy shit, what's up with his hands? In my opinion, it looks cool, but kinda off. Next up we got the wacky woohoo pizza enjoyer Dante, rocking two devil trigger forms, like in DMC2. A standard and super form! Design wise, the standard DT is the DMC4 DT, but the red is muted. The Los Illuminados emblem is way less obvious. But credit to where credit is due, you can see the wings when you glide. And do they look fantastic indeed, so in short the standard DT is a pure if it ain't broke don't fix it. Just mute the red. Normally I would call out Capcom for being lazy, but in this case I'll let it slide. Because it suited an older Dante in DMC4 and 5-2. Reason number 2. SIN DEVIL TRIGGER BABY! As for DT designs, this is where it's an upgraded Majin Devil form. It has wings that look very similar to that one, but better because of the much needed lava red color. Inside of the wings, plus the red color on the eyes. The whole torso is red too, them spiky calves not to mention that. Demon X. Makes for the reddest DT to ever be put in this series, just get any random frame of this thing, then you get a solid metal cover for any album. Next up we got Deadbeat Dad of the Air Virgil who unlocks Sin Devil Trigger right after his roided up Squidward half eats the devil fruit. 
I describe this form as the roided up DMC 4SE Devil Trigger. I'm happy to report that the Shin Megami Tensai philosophy still lives on in this one, with that headpiece having holographic spikes coming out of it. Along with them blue insides on the wings, the elbows even have them swords coming out of them. As for the actual face, it has the same motif as Dante's SDT, making this one a direct contrast. The wings wrap around them exactly like a coat, when it's spread out it looks a lot like Dante's SDT wings, giving the two some much needed two sides of the same coin aesthetic. The torso has a white V, looks cool but a tad bit corny, for some reason Virgil has a tail, Dante doesn't have one. The spikes around the calves are still there. If I'm being honest with you guys, I think this is equally as dope as Dante's SDT, I'm a fan of how the whole thing is put together. While Dante's devil form looks very death metal, Virgil's demon form is purely anime death metal. It's because of the Shin Megami Tensei influence that keeps living rent free in Virgil's DT designs. The death metal stuff is from the fact that you don't want to find yourself in a dark alley alone with it at 3am. Moving on to the deadweight Nero who got his DT through the booty call of reassurance and the power of family. He got a proper devil trigger that looks like his DMC4 stand but presented in much finer detail. Green bluish skin is here plus the blue torso area. He's now rocking long ass hair, take a closer look at it from the front, it's his DMC4 hairstyle. The horns are almost halo shaped, he's got the blue spectral wings that grab him from the damn shoulders. Hey look at that, he's got a spectral Yamato too. All in all Nero has a kick ass looking devil trigger form that really fits who he is as a protagonist and his place in the overarching story of DMC5. Since he gets the thing at the end of the game. Now for this category's top 5 designs. In the number 5 spot is the OG Devil May Cry, now the DT looks like a metallic suit of armor that goes for Alistair and Ifrit because of the early PS2 hardware Camille was working with at the time. In the number 4 spot is Devil May Cry 4. While that game has some pretty rock solid designs, I have a problem with Nero and Trish, one getting a hologram and the other getting an aura that kinda makes the whole ensemble fall apart. But at least Dante and Virgil have kept their demonic looking appearance in DT form. In the number 3 spot is Devil May Cry 3, bruv you cannot go wrong with the Cosmo Kaneka designs. Yes they do look ridiculously anime but that's the entire charm. It even has a ton of unique DT designs for Dante alone, while differentiating between him and Virgil. In the number 2 spot is Devil May Cry 2, for as much flack as this game gets, it has some of the best demon form designs to be featured in this series for both Dante and Lucia, showing both of their differences in these Tekken looking DT forms, not to mention the monster known as Majin DT that looks like something straight out of a horror movie. Taking the win for designs is Devil May Cry 5, coming in with some of the greatest demon forms of all time. Nightmare is a fun callback summon to that one boss in DMC1, even though it's more of a blob monster. But more importantly Nero has a proper devil trigger that looks badass. Speaking of which, both Dante and Virgil get the great dragon looking SDT designs that are truly horrifying to witness. Next up we'll be looking at each healing factor, kicking it off with DMC1. I'm surprised by how well DT regens your health in this game. Once you tap the R1 button, huge chunks of that health bar will start filling up the empty parts from the damage taken, with them green life points. If you got some devil trigger to spare, then DT can save your unskilled ass. Heading over to everyone's favorite punching bag, Devil May Cry 2. The regeneration for the three devil triggers on hand is pretty good, or maybe a tad bit too good. Doesn't matter if you're playing as Dante or Lucia, it doesn't even matter if you're on normal or Majin DT. Pop that devil trigger, you'll start regenerating faster than Wade Wilson and Logan after getting shot by military grade rockets and nukes. If you find yourself at the very rare occasion of getting close to death's door in DMC2's difficulties, except for Dante must die, turn DT on that clear health bar is bound to go green in no time, saving you from certain death. When Majin is thrown into the mix, Dante gets fully healed up after it's used. On to everyone's goat, Devil May Cry 3, the devil trigger that comes with the weakest healing factor for both Dante and Virgil. Just tap into the Sparta lineage to find out that you only get chip health back as the health bar in 3 only fills up in tiny increments. That's where all the complaints about DMC2 being too easy actually start to kick in, with DMC3's more active AI where demons and bosses read you like a hawk, reacting to your every movements carefully to then counter whatever you just threw at them, plus the enemies knowing how to hit you or it hurts the hardest. Now the DT refills on a half at a time basis. The rate they region in DMC3 is the same rate as being served ice cream from a broken McDonald's machine. When you're close to death's door, a common occurrence in DMC3, you're gonna fill up a couple of tiny notches, barely surviving the encounter. Or dying anyways. Now onto the rush job known as Devil May Cry 4, the DT heals you up a lot faster than DMC3, just slightly, not much. If you wind up activating the stand DT, it's a slog to regenerate. Playing as deadweight, no child support included, comes with DMC3 levels of health fillups, getting some tiny increments back into the health bar. Not enough to save that deadweighted ass from the brink of death. 
Switch to Dante, you'll get the DMC1 regeneration. You don't get your health refilled right away like in DMC2. It gives you two thirds of the health bar back, saving your tailpipe from certain death. Same thing applies to Virgil and Trish. Heading off to the game that we thought would never see the light of day, Devil May Cry 5, coming in with four DTs. One doesn't heal you whatsoever and the other three heal you pretty generously. Since them vital stars are out of the question. In this entry talking about V for a second, the nightmare devil trigger amounts to someone adding an extra chess piece to the board. Not your typical transformation. To put it bluntly, there's no chance in hell of healing any damage blend. Cause V has a non-existent healing factor. Every time you're about to die, you got no demon form to regenerate V's my chemical romance reject Kylo Ren looking ass. From certain death. Have fun I guess, make sure that V's far away from the actual fight. But let's be real, he's a pain in the ass to use either way. On to the wacky woohoo double D tiered pizza man Dante. The standard DT is a lot more generous than it was in DMC 1 and 4. It's most definitely way handier than DMC 3's regeneration. The only DT that tops DMC 5's regen is DMC 2. Whenever you take damage, those bits of health regenerate quickly. The moment you pop DT when a tiny smidget of health is taken off, it's regenerated instantly. When you're almost at zero health, popping DT will give you a decent amount of your health back. Pretty handy when there's no green orb in sight. His other form, the Sin Devil Trigger, ditches healing factors entirely. You can't regenerate in this form. To be fair, it doesn't need it, considering how OP Sin Devil Trigger is. Since there are so many moves using it to finish off an entire encounter, without getting hit. And that's on low health. Giving SDT the element of opportunity cost. Getting overpowered moves that can one-shot a whole crowd of demons. At the cost of healing. Playing as his older motivated brother, you get Sin DT, only coming in with a decent healing factor that ain't as strong as Dante's standard DT. It's more like DMC4's regeneration gives you a decent chunk back. Trust me, it could be a slow process to get a good chunk of your health back. Beating the game, Deadweight Boy Nero gets a DT form that has the same healing factor as Dante, regenerating chip damage fast. If you're on the verge of death, DT is more than enough to save you. Now to find out which one has the best regeneration. In the number 5 spot is Devil May Cry 3. The DT barely heals you in this one. It heals you on a very slow one at a time basis. The damage that it heals is barely noticeable. In the number 4 spot is Devil May Cry 4. The healing factor varies from one character to another. But it ain't what I would call the best healer for all of them. In the number 3 spot is the OG Devil May Cry. I was in shock by how good this thing was at healing you. Getting Dante to recover a ton of missing HP that was taken from him. Saving you at death's door and fixing you up to full health fast. In the number 2 spot is Devil May Cry 5. Vital stars aren't a thing in DMC5. So they might as well get you to regen health at a faster rate. To make up for the lack of items, minus V. In the number one spot is Devil May Cry 2, healing Dante and Lucy up in a flash. Our next category is Hyper Armor, the thing that negates knockback damage. Starting off with DMC1. When you wind up getting hit by enemy attacks in DT, you still take that damage. The difference is when you're swinging at them demons, then you won't get flung back to the end of the arena. You're gonna keep your position to kick that demon ass! But if you're just running or staying in place with that aura, then expect to get thrown backwards. Or to be heavily affected by the attack. When it comes to some of the tougher guys, mainly nobodies, these ugly ass abominations can kick your teeth in. Breaking the hyper armor, flinging Dante across the room. If I'm being real, the DMC1 hyper armor is pretty solid, it negates more damage than I actually remember it doing. Just remember this, it works better on some enemy types and some devils can break through the hyper armor. Next up is the most Kino entry in the series, Devil May Cry 2. The hyper armor for both Dante and Lucia is pretty solid, just turn that DT on and none of them will be moved around too much. Sure, there's that enemy type or boss who's an exception to that rule, but we're talking Devil May Cry 2, the one game where the square button gets you through most of the encounters with relative ease. So the hyper armor will rarely be used. Moving on to Tsuno's crowning achievement, Devil May Cry 3, coming in with arguably one of the strongest hyper armors in the series, for both Dante and Virgil, that works on a 3 strikes and you're out basis. When you're hit with a huge ass attack, you lose most of that health bar, but Dante doesn't get knocked back. His combo strings are intact. The only time Dante can get knocked back is if you're hit with the attack three times in DT, or if an explosion has anything to do with it, or if you're fighting Beowulf or other rage bosses, and Virgil. The hyper armor works the same when you're playing as him. What DMC lacked in healing options, it more than makes up for it. With its hyper armor, enter Devil May Cry 4. When we're talking about Nero's DT stand, you get no hyper armor whatsoever. Whenever you get hit by Lord Strikes, Nero will get ragdolled back and forth. Talk about dead weight. Dante, Virgil, even Trish do get that hyper armor action. That works in the same way that it did in DMC1. A ton of the enemy attacks will take the damage off of you, lowering your health and stall points. 
but none of these three will get staggered, keeping their combo strings uninterrupted for the most part, with the exception of the Blitzfucker and other AoE boss attacks that can break the armor and yeet you across the hallway. So DMC4 has some pretty solid hyper armor that's slightly more forgiving than DMC3's, by removing the three strike system that can block some solid damage. Next up we got Devil May Cry 5 giving us 5 DTs. One has no hyper armor with the other four getting the strongest hyper armor in the series. Starting off with Emo Poetry Boy, V's Devil Trigger. Boiling down to an extra summon on the battlefield, no demon form included. So obviously the healing factor and hyper armor are out of the question. If V's scrawny ass gets hit then he'll get smacked around the streets of Redgrave City and the Clyphoff. Losing style points and a crap ton of damage. The summons get the hyper armor. Once Nightmare is cold and Griffin and Shadow are immortal for a short period of time, taking no damage at all. If they're dead then they'll instantly revive on the spot. Since the pets get axed off instantly at times, especially Griffin. That birdie turns into a KFC drumstick in a flash. Then we get Dante's standard DT coming in with a pretty damn generous hyper armor that works like the DMC4 hyper armor. With a couple of tweaks, first off the style rank isn't deducted. You lose out on most of the health bar but continue attacking head on. Only a couple of enemies can break the armor, same deal goes for Nero. Enter Sin DT coming in with the most powerful hyper armor in the series. No one can interrupt Dante and Virgil's Sin devil trigger attacks once an enemy hits him Sparta boys. They remain unfazed! But it won't keep you away from death's door. Overall DMC5 has some solid hyper armor, with the exception of V getting you to keep them combos going. Now to find out which game made their DT the tankiest. In the number 5 spot is Devil May Cry 1, in order for the hyper armor to take effect, you have to always be hitting something. If you're just standing there or caught while trying to dodge an attack, it's a lot like getting hit in human form. In the number 4 spot is Devil May Cry 4. The armor for Dante and Virgil is rock solid, but Deadweight gets no such thing. Instead when he is hidden Devil Trigger he's ragdolled across the room. But the Sparta Boys entries do get some solid hyper armor to ensure that them combos are going. In the number 3 spot we got Devil May Cry 3 coming in with some solid hyper armor that keeps your combo strings going even on Dante Must Die. In the number 2 spot is Devil May Cry 5, them hyper armors can tank some high octane punishment dealt to you by them demons, keeping you unfazed while keeping it stylish. Except for V who doesn't get any hyper armor, getting tossed around like a ragdoll. In the number 1 spot we got Devil May Cry 2 with Dante and Lucia being unfazed by anything that strikes them, further obliterating the MC2. Next category is damage, kicking it off with the OG Devil May Cry, coming at you with a DT that can absolutely break this game! With the tools available to you, pop this thing and you'll be thrashing away at everything that stands in your path. As long as you know how to use it right, Alistair gets you to swing the sword harder and faster, getting you to chop away at many of the demon's health bar, till they're nothing but a bloody stain on Malay Castle. That Helmbreaker can shred boss HPs in half. Once you switch over to Ifrit, the Inferno and Kick 13 are more than enough to kill off an entire horde of demons, while chopping up a ton of boss health bars in half. In some cases if you wind up spamming Inferno twice, it'll be more than enough to kill off Phantom. So yeah, DMC1 DT can deal an insane amount of damage with both Alistair and Ifrit. Heading off to Devil May Cry 2, the standard DTs are really good at dealing damage, maybe even too good. Let's talk about it. Once you pop them DTs, you'll be melting away boss health bars faster than how Ebony and Ivory get the job done. Once the square button is held in Devil Trigger, then rest assured, the mostly brain dead demons are gonna wind up deleted off of the map. Most bosses don't stand a chance against that pulled devil trigger square button combo. If you decide to go up close and personal, them devil triggered melee attacks cut them to shreds, unaliving them in a few short seconds because of that insane damage dealt. When Dante's lone health the Majin DT's activated, oh lord it's the definition of a beat a game button. One hit from this thing on a boss wipes out most of that health bar. Doesn't matter if it's a melee or projectile attack, the bosses don't stand a chance against you. Devil May Cry 2 has the most OP set of devil triggers in this franchise, making DMC2 a much easier game than it already is. Heading over to Devil May Cry 3, the game that went on to fix all of Devil May Cry 2's shortcomings, by making this game way harder than the last one, because DT itself doesn't do much in terms of dealing any significant amount of damage, only adding a small amount of attack buffs, it's not enough to put any sort of deep dents in their HP, that came as a result of the DMC2's too easy complaint. But what if I told you a mechanic exists where you can hold the DT button to charge up the gauge, once it's full let go of the button, then BOOM! 
a powerful explosion causing demonic genocide, known as the Devil Trigger Burst. The more you charge the gauge, the more powerful that explosion gets. All in all, DMC3's DT is weak on damage buffs. For Dante and Virgil, the DT burst makes up for it in a way, but the demon forms in this game will mainly be used for a burst, and nothing else. On to Devil May Cry 4 giving substantial DT buffs to the four characters who have it. Nero's Yamato DT gets you to pull off more damage by speeding up the Red Queen's attacks on 2 times speed. Getting a standard swing to output double the damage. Getting Nero to dish out more powerful attacks. Get this, the Devil Buster moves are buffed. Slapping them around even harder while giving you cooler looking animations than the non-DT'd ones. You also got moves like Showdown capitalizing on that idea. It's like Nero's Dance Macabre. Then we get to the Sparta Boy's interest. Those three can deal a shit ton of pain to enemies. Bosses included combined with a few moveset alterations. When it comes to Dante, the Stinger now has a vortex effect that can suck in a couple of demons in its path, leveling every single one of them standing. It even gives him Rising Sun right after Kick 13. The standard combos get a surprising increase in attack buffs. Then we get to Virgil and his motivation, with a couple of insane damage buffs. Virgil too gets Rising Sun, but it's after Lunar Phase. In DT, Stinger and Overdrive get a few powerful buffs. Them standard attacks get more powerful along with the concentration meter. Moving on to Trish, that DT is a powerhouse based off of pure damage alone. Check this out, a lot of the standard attacks are buffed beyond belief. Drives are extended, I mean look at this carnage, it's ridiculous! But I can't forget about the elephant in the room distortion. It goes like this. Once you get a charge up attack going, activate or turn off the DT at the very last second of the start animation. And oh my lord did he just wipe out that boss from existence! With Virgil, it's way more ridiculous with Beowulf. It can turn DMC4 into a literal One Punch Man game. DMC4 more than made up for DMC3's lacking DT damage output. Heading off to Devil May Cry 5 and them 5 Devil Triggers. Getting to the game's Pokemon Trainer V, summoning Nightmare on the board. Dealing a surprising amount of damage on demons and bosses. Through various standard punches that can tank a lot of enemy HP. Till they're close to their death. Or that purple state before sticking the cane in them for the killing blow. Oh, and there are the lasers. You got small lasers, huge ass lasers that can level entire armies. Then we get Nero's standard DT that has the same idea as his DMC4 one, making attacks move faster, dishing more damage, adding them Devilbringer claws, plus the showdown for some added measure to disintegrate all that stands before the deadweight's path. Then we get Dante and the two DTs. The standard one adds a ton of damage buffs to the already existing attacks, getting the wacky woohoo pizza man to kill a lot of them faster. The stinger vortex is back, killing off a huge crowd, getting them to back off of Dante. Activate that sin devil trigger and holy shitballs, a ton of them demons are left to nothing but waste. Each attack takes out a shit ton of health from an enemy or boss HP pretty damn swift. For Dante or Virgil, that's just a push of the triangle button, or the square button for Dante. Devil May Cry 5 has some strong ass devil triggers that can give out some deadly punishment, without breaking the entire game. Time to find out which devil trigger dealt the most punishment. In the number 5 spot is Devil May Cry 3. I know that Itsuno needed to make DMC3 harder than DMC2, and he really needed to. A part of that decision was adding a pretty small buff to the DT strikes, but it made the purpose of Devil Trigger in DMC3 only for DT explosions and nothing else. In the number 4 spot is the OG Devil May Cry. It's a heavy hitter that can tank any devil's bosses till they're wiped off of Malay Castle using Alistair and Ifrit. But on the flip side, there have been a couple of DTs later on that managed to deal more punishment than this transformation. In the number 3 spot is Devil May Cry 4, the demon forms in this game from the stand to Trish. All of them do deal a crazy amount of damage, taking out a ton of them bosses quickly. Hell, they take out a ton of demons in a heartbeat. In the number 2 spot, we got Devil May Cry 5, them demon forms do pack quite a punch. The Nightmare plus the standard DTs can give them hell, pulverizing them till their deaths. Not to mention the Sin Devil Triggers that can nuke entire arenas. In the number 1 spot, we got Devil May Cry 2, all the standard DT forms are packing a crazy amount of heat. By shooting things alone, and Majin DT can delete any huge boss off in an instant. Our next category is moveset, in this part of the video I'll be going through all the added movesets and the DT altered moves. Kicking it off with DMC1, the game that started off with the idea of separate movesets that you get for Devil Trigger. With the two weapons, you got Alistair and Ifrit, let's talk about them. When it comes to Alistair, we get Air Raid, getting Dante to fly around shooting lightning from above like his Thor. The Giga Chat version, dealing a decent amount of damage to a few demons. Push the triangle button for Vortex to ram yourself into a massive horde of devils, backing a few of them off of you. It can be used creating a few flashy looking combos using DMC1's limited moveset. 
Then we get to the Ifrit where shit hits the fan! Introducing the iconic hard hitting Kick 13! A flurry of flaming kicks that kicks the ever loving shit out of them enemy types! While taking a fuck ton of their health away! Out of all the Kick 13s in the series, this one pummels the hardest. Even while landing on marionettes and frosts, you can feel the sheer power of the move. Then we get to the Meteor, the flaming chargeable Hadouken Dante acquires. You can shoot it right away for quick chip damage, or charge it up for some hard hitting blows. Then we get to the Inferno Ground Smash, a move that exists to break large crowds off of you, while delivering a hard ass smackdown to the devilish foes below you, smashing their numbers apart. DMC1 is the game that does a really good job of utilizing DT exclusive moves. Each of them have their own unique functionality that's useful in many different situations. Then comes Devil May Cry 2 that has the mechanic of the amulet system for both Dante and Lucia. Throughout the game you collect gems to put into the amulet. Each amulet gives you different DT attributes to run faster, fly, or switch up elemental attacks. Fire for more damage, electricity for faster attacks, and ice to slow him down. You can mix and match these based on the fighting style you're going for when you activate DT. Do you want to tank everything inside, fly around, switch up them gems, and go for it? You want to freeze these demons up and heal faster? Go for it! Activate Majin DT, you get some wildly kick-ass moves that the game doesn't bother to tell you about their existence whatsoever. The fireballs are OP, being more than enough to take down most bosses. Even the standard melee attacks on the ground or in the air can kick a few devil's teeth in too quickly. To the point where I got no clue what the rest of this thing does, I had to look it up on YouTube plus the damn wiki. If you decide to helm break your eel twist downwards like a vertical vortex. That looks pretty cool if I'm being honest. Dante channels his inner Sonic the Hedgehog through the all-time classic front flip of death to take a ton of them demons out. Surprisingly enough, this DT has a preview of DMC3's DT explosion that levels a whole crowd of demons through a large AoE screen clearer, doing a shit ton of damage to any nearby bosses or demons. Draining the whole DT gauge just like in DMC3. Check this out, Majin Devil Trigger comes with a Kamehameha. Firing off a huge ass death laser, melting off everything in Dante's path. To tell you the truth, you don't get to use a lot of these moves, because the game doesn't tell you a damn thing about Majin DT abilities. I had to scour the internet to find out that they exist. The fireball is more than enough to take everything out, so might as well use it since this thing runs out faster than Dante gets into debt. If I'm being honest, I really do like DMC2's amulet system of picking different attributes that you want to play around with, making the Devil Trigger transformation your own. It's kind of sad to see that this idea was axed off from the series in future titles. Then we got Majin Devil Trigger handing over some sick looking moves that will sadly go overlooked. You gotta be on death's door to pull off the transformation, not to mention the quick deactivation. Nonetheless, DMC2 had some unrealized potential for them demon forms. Moving on to the greatest redemption arc in gaming history, Devil May Cry 3. Coming in with very little moves for Dante and absolutely nothing for Virgil. For Dante, you get Air Raid and Vortex from DMC1 with Nevin. Shooting lightning from the skies and ramming them demons through. For Virgil, you're working with the moves that you got. No DT exclusives. The closest thing to a DT exclusives are them DT bursts. So DMC3 is low on Devil Trigger exclusives. Enter Devil May Cry 4 with them 4 DTs, kicking it off with Nero's stand. Handing him the showdown, getting you to hack and slash away at many hordes of demons while looking as cool as possible. You got a chargeable Red Queen attack known as Maximum Bet. Death Beam slashing at many enemy types. Virgil's son gets summon swords. One shot of the Blue Rose shoots out a summon shuriken, doing more damage juggling demons for longer. Charge the Blue Rose, then Nero will shoot out a ton of summon shurikens, pulling off more damage while giving a few devils some more airtime. Then we get the wacky woohoo pizza man. Now he doesn't have any particular DT exclusives, what's on offer is them damage buffs. And elemental effects like the stinger energy beam, plus auto charge shots for ebony and ivory. And the other firearms, that look pretty damn cool to be honest. I almost forgot that rising sun comes after kick 13 when you have Gilgamesh equipped. Delivering a stylish ass beatdown. Moving on to Virgil, adding some effects to the moves, along with a few DT exclusives. Beowulf gets your rising sun after the lunar phase, dribbling enemies into the air Ronaldo style, chopping up them HPs. Yamato Combo B gets a pretty damn solid extender, getting the motivated one to execute the enemy. And yes, you can air stinger for longer. Fill that concentration meter, pop that devil trigger, for that sweet judgment nut, end! Slashing the space-time continuum, annihilating everything in plain sight. Leaving nothing standing in your path, painting their blood across the pavement. Leveling entire armies off of the face of the earth. Moving on to Trish, coming in with a DT that extends attacks, making him do more damage. 
To be fair, DMC4 has some decent DT exclusive moves and effects getting you to pull off some pretty sick combos. Getting on to Devil May Cry 5 coming at you with some pretty sick DT exclusive moves. For one summon and four demon forms, kicking things off with Poetry Boy V's Nightmare. Combo A is a four hit combo pummeling them devils into a bloody pulp. Then Combo B pops up getting the Blob Monster to do a 360 spin, putting massive dents in HPs. Mid-air Nightmare can Hulk smash onto some demons, getting them to kneel before you, smashing their faces to the ground. This thing has got beams of death, small ones that can spread out a ton of devils, breaking them apart. Then you got Domination, a huge fuck-off laser to disintegrate everything into nothingness, vaporizing many bosses and demons alike. Then we got DMC5 Nero DT that has the same moves and properties as his DMC4 one. Showdown, Maximum, Bet, Summon, Shurikens are all here, they work the same way as they did in DMC4. Same goes for Dante, standard DT works like the one in DMC4. Difference is once you have Devil Sword Dante, sword formation is automatic, no charge up required, enhancing every single style property. On the contrary, the secret lies within that Sin Devil trigger, and oh lord it adds to Dante's already insane skill list. The best part is DMC5 actually tells you about it. It has the standard slashes using the triangle button, hit the square button for the Ombra, the game's fireball like DMC2's Majin form. But the party is just getting started, you got Sin Stinger, a hard hitting vortex drilling and ramming a shit ton of demons in your wake. There's Demolition where the wacky woohoo pizza man sucks everything into a black hole blowing their pathetic bodies until they're blown into tiny bits. Enter the loose, blasting them fools with rapid energy blasts ending their entire careers. This thing has its own inferno, dealing large AoE splash damage, pulverizing the shit out of everybody in the area, grinding them into tiny little bits and pieces. There's Judgment, Dante's own JCE, slashing all that lies before him, just like Sparta in the DMC1 opening cutscene. The animations are kinda similar. The SDT has a ton of dodge options, getting Dante to be more mobile, through teleports backing away from incoming attacks like Nightcrawler, moving in and out of shots being fired at you. Managed to keep the style rank at Triple S, there's Quadruple S, allowing you to switch in and out of SDT to Standard DT, and Human Form getting you to pull off more stylish combo chains, becoming a very lore accurate Dante. Moving on to the approaching Storm, Virgil's kick-ass DT only moves. Combo B gets them extenders in there, with Yamato delivering an outright execution on anybody Virgil slashes. Beowulf Combo B gets one vicious backhand, slapping all devils out of existence. Judgment cut and is back, cutting up all of reality leaving nothing in your way, like in DMC4. 5 gives you two specials on offer. Beowulf gets hell on earth. Thanosing demonic armies back to hell, unaliving entire bosses flipping them off on their faces. Then we get Deep Stinger, his own demolition vortex, drilling a ton of them demons grinding them into ashes. The moves you have on offer get buffed like crazy in Sin DT, Kick 13 adds a few more kicks to that flurry, plus the crazy amount of punishment. Lunar Phase gets Virgil to Sonic the Hedgehog for a longer time. Standard Judgment Cuts are multiplied into 3 or 4 Judgment Cuts, adding more to its utility. Overall, DMC5 has some great DT exclusives getting you to overpower the game. Time to find out which Devil Trigger had the sickest moves. In the number 5 spot is Devil May Cry 3, the Devil Trigger for Dante only gets 2 moves, while Virgil gets none whatsoever. In the number 4 spot is the OG Devil May Cry, the moves are limited so are the DT moves, but they're fun to play around with using up to tank a few bosses. In the number 3 spot we got Devil May Cry 4 handing over some great DT exclusives to chain into a ton of stylish combos. In the number 2 spot we got Devil May Cry 2. The amulet system is a really good idea, customizable devil triggers have a lot of potential, for player expression getting you to make the demon form entirely your own. Majin Devil Trigger has some sick moves, the problem is that you won't use most of the moves. Since the game doesn't tell you about it, not to mention the basic attacks are more than enough to tank an entire boss, getting you to park the rest of the moveset aside. Other than that, Devil May Cry 2 has a couple of good ideas going for it, making me think that customizable Devil Triggers need to be back into the series. In the number 1 spot is Devil May Cry 5, for real, some of the moves in this game are top notch if I'm being honest. The standard DTs plus the Nightmare do have some pretty damn solid utility when it comes to the skills they got, but DMC5 is high on this list because of them Sin Devil Triggers. 
For one, the game tells you about what they can do. And the other reason is the movesets are an extension of Dante and Virgil's repertoire. While playing as the wacky woohoo pizza man, the game rewards you for playing well, getting you to switch in and out of it at will, using these moves along with Dante's standard moveset. When it comes to the motivation man, it's an extension of his own moveset, while handing in some apocalyptic finishers of his own. TIME FOR THE GRAND STAND OF CROWNING! THE WORLD DEVIL TRIGGER CHAMPIONSHIP TITLE! LET'S UNPACK THIS HUGE ASS TOP 14! In the number 14 spot is V's Nightmare in Devil May Cry 5. This one is pretty low on the list not because it's bad or anything, it's just that it doesn't give you any healing factor to speak of. And the summon is kinda slow. In the number 13 spot is Virgil's DMC3 DT. I know this one's low on the list, but it doesn't provide much in terms of DT only moves, effects or enhancements. It doesn't even give you enough damage buffs, but it looks cool. In the number 12 spot is Dante's DMC3 DT. It has the same issues as Virgil's DT. No substantial enhancements, but it's higher on the list because of the different designs after each weapon switch. Number 11 on the list is Nero's stand in DMC4. This one is here because of the high damage this thing can pull off. Because of the sped up Red Queen attacks getting this thing to be a force to be reckoned with. Number 10 on this here list is also Nero from Devil May Cry 5. The DT form has the same idea as DMC4 Nero's DT. But it's an actual devil trigger. It has some real hyper armor getting this thing to actually be of some use. Number 9 on this list is DMC4 Dante's devil trigger. This thing is solid getting Dante to do some serious damage. To all them demons ganging up on you, wiping them out! Number 8 on the list is DMC1 Dante Devil Trigger. I'm surprised by how well this thing holds its own. Elemental attacks, you got it. Crazy damage buffs? There's plenty more where that came from. DT only moves, they're pretty damn useful here. Number 7 on here is Trish's DMC4 DT because of the insane damage buffs it has. Dishing out more punishment than needed, plus the effect multiplier. In the number 6 spot is Dante's Devil May Cry 5 standard devil trigger. It's the same ordeal as DMC4 Dante's DT, dealing more damage. But with Devil Sword Dante, the styles are buffed automatically. In the number 5 spot is Devil May Cry 4 Virgil Devil Trigger, for its sheer power and moves. In the number 4 spot is Dante and Lucia's Devil May Cry 2 Devil Triggers, for the customizable demon forms through the amulet system. In the number 3 spot is Majin Devil Trigger from Devil May Cry 2, for its high damage and OP moves that the game sadly does not tell you a thing about. In the number 2 spot is Dante's Sin Devil Trigger from Devil May Cry 5, coming in with a vast number of overpowered moves that are used to tank everything in sight, plus the many dodging options on offer that comes with the added value of the quadruple S, rewarding you for playing stylishly switching in and out of the demon forms, mixing the standard and SDT moves. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the World Devil Trigger Championship title, Virgil Sin Devil Trigger from Devil May Cry 5. The reason why this one wins the title is because it puts Virgil's moveset on steroids. Almost everything is enhanced, getting more powerful moves and abilities, wrecking everything while getting Virgil to keep his speed. Hell, I'd even argue that he's moving faster than his default speed. Bruh, he's literally moving way faster than he usually moves. Plus the 3 world ending DT only moves nuking absolutely everything. Plus you can turn it off anytime you want, getting it to be more manageable than Dante's. Now that the world devil trigger champion has been crowned, we come to the end of this video. What were your guys thoughts on it? And which devil trigger was more worthy of the title? Let me know in the comments down below. I really appreciate everybody's patience with me because this damn video took me a long ass time to make. About an entire month. So I hope that you really liked it. I'd like to thank everybody for bumping up my subscriber count to 1883 subs. It truly means a lot to me. You guys rock. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and smash that subscribe button real impact style. Ring the bell icon for more Devil May Cry and other action game content. This has been the Devil Joe signing out, and happy late Halloween. Catch you on the next one.